It's another side that like wants to take more. It wants to go that one more round. Because like going that one more round when you don't think you can, that's what makes all the difference in your life. You know what I mean? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of One More Round, the Rocky Series podcast. Uh, we are back after a little bit of a delay between my work schedule, my son's wedding, and Kate being on her vacation to Iceland. How did that go, Katie? Oh, it's the second time I've been there. I love it. Reykjavik is rapidly becoming my favorite European city. I love it there. Oh, love, what's love, it called? love. Reykjavik? 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 Reykjavik is the capital. Okay. Yeah. Of course, I've seen that written out. I've never heard it pronounced, so thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Kyle, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Yeah, I had a week-long staycation a couple of weeks ago. I was at home. I did a spiritual journey. I tried magic mushrooms for the first time. <laughs> oh, what? what? For real? That's yeah. so fun. <laughs> like a lot? Like d- enough to kind of trip or uh, just... yeah yeah I, I did three and a half grams which is like an eighth of an ounce i think how was oh, it wow it was cool it just it changes your perspective and stuff so i bought it online from british columbia of course they just send it in the mail <laughs> <laughs> make sure your kids don't open the mail it was a cheaper trip than a lot of trips that you could take so <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true Fair that's enough. true all right. Well, that's awesome. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to, back to planet Earth, Kyle. All right. So uh, here we go. I'm excited for this episode. Katie, I believe you've got a couple of emails for us to read. I do. The first one is from Michael. Hey, y'all. I hope Katie had an enjoyable vacation. I did. Great work by Jared filling in for episode seven. I never noticed the blurring out of the people in the background until you pointed it out, Ryan. It's a great reminder that you can see a film numerous times and still find something new with each rewatch. So I'm surprised how many people have never seen that before. Kyle never seen it. Jared nope. never seen it. Nope. Katie, did you ever notice that? Or no. Mm-mm. Okay, interesting. I definitely think the director's cut version of the funeral scene is way better. Having Duke give the eulogy that he did is one of the most poignant speeches of the series. I also appreciate Rocky's words more in the director's cut. Do you agree with that sentiment? I do. Yeah, definitely better. Definitely better. Although I really love you, man. That Rocky says, I don't like that. That kind of okay. irks me a little. I don't know. Anybody else? Like, it's not the best acting, or it just came off. It's kind of, I don't know. It came off too much, maybe too much. Like, not genuinely. And it was sort of like just like cringy a little bit. The funeral speeches by both Tony and Rocky regarding if it's the director's cut or the original, doesn't matter. A lot of words salad. It's, it's oddly written in general. I yes. love Sly, but boy, he really does muck up some dialogue sometimes i did mm-hmm. i think the three of us could probably write better dialogue for that funeral scene from the care which is odd to say i mean i can't create stories necessarily but i think i would be a good dialogue doctor i think i could fix like i don't know why rocky's talking this way it's an odd word salad from both characters but yeah indeed michael goes on to say i will say that i disagree about needing rocky five to get from rocky four to rocky balboa The reason I say this is because it can all center around the loss of Adrian off screen to cancer. You have the time jump from 1985 to 2006. And once Rocky loses Adrian, he doesn't need all the money and glamour and such. He makes sure Robert gets college paid in full with no debts. He has the restaurant paid for. He could have given the rest of the money away. Then he just goes on to live a simple life. If you want to have Rocky V to connect to Balboa, that's fine. But I think you can explain the storyline between Rocky IV and Rocky Balboa without needing Rocky V. That's a good point, Michael. 
Sure, but we could do this all day. Yeah. Basically, all he's doing is rewriting the whole story. Fine, we could do that for any film, for any trilogy or any sequels. We could say, well, we don't need that part. We take that part out. We could just jump here, jump there. I, I get, but the reality is we have Rocky Five, and the reality is is that it did give us the how did he lose his money? The whole, like, he gives away everything, buys a restaurant. I, I, I can see that to a degree, but he's such a destitution, in, even in Rocky Balboa, that he had tens of millions of dollars. The fact that he would give it all the way that he's poor is unlikely to but those are yeah i agree with ryan 100 on that i think in rocky balboa i did not at all get that he's poor i think he's living comfortably but simple oh. he has a restaurant that takes money i feel like he's middle class yeah barely balboa. barely like it's not that great of a house that him and adonis were hanging out in the other it's just a, well there's it's nothing wrong it's just house. regular it's just mm-hmm. like Okay, well, I disagree. I think he gave away too much then. If he's in that situation and he had tens of millions of dollars, that's way... Could put this way, he had so much money. He had so much money that he could have literally bought out his own restaurant where he would never pay rent or like he would never have to make money for the restaurant. He would he could have so much money that he could just have a restaurant for the fun of it. There would be no restaurant. There would be no restaurant if they had money. There you go. Like that, Adrian probably got sick of working at the pet shop. Sure. We know she could cook, even though she's a little vicious with the garlic. <laughs> we know that. She probably was like, hey, she's going to start a business instead of working under Gloria until she's yeah. old. And so it's like, if they were wealthy, the idea that he'd give away his money and then work at a restaurant, no one would buy that in Rocky Balboa. If you went right from Rocky Four in that palatial mansion to him owning a restaurant, all of a sudden people would be like, what the f- just happened i would buy it because he doesn't work at a restaurant he owns the restaurant he all he does is go around and tell stories and it's mm-hmm. for well, adrian it's fine. yeah well like, yeah, the yeah. restaurant story is fine we're not arguing that point you know. I, i'm just saying that sh- sure then we would be there and we wouldn't be talking about the poor rocky five film i guess it's mm-hmm. an odd exercise to rocky five despite its wars i can't wait we're to go we're dedicating a whole freaking season to Rocky Five, so we're going to have lots of time to talk about the ins and outs and bad and the good from it, because there's so much good that's in it. I, mm-hmm. There is a perfect film in there somewhere. If you were to chunk out some parts and replace yeah, with yeah. other good parts, I think Rocky Five, I'll say it 100,000 times, that the fight ended in the ring. He got rid of the mullet. No, you can still have a street fight. See, people think you can't have both. Remember my compromise? The fight. Yes, I love church. that. In the church. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, I, I, love that yeah. I, I like I, the street fight. You can uh, have it. Yeah. You can have it. it. Doesn't have to be so long. You can have mm-hmm. them go. Okay. Ninety seconds pound, and then they get split up. And then it somehow it's like resolved. Like you know, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it in the ring type thing. Uh, that's but in I'm the saying. church ring, I I do sure, like that church ring would have been yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Let's let's stop doing bare knuckles now. Let's put on gloves and go to the church ring. Yeah. The street fight period ending for me. It's always been a sore spot for me for 25, 30 years. And what was the other issue? The mullet on Tommy. I didn't like the mullet. Uh, <laughs> anyways, we, yeah, we, we will get into it yeah, for we'll sure. It. I love Rocky Five discussion. It's always the most passionate. I love being a Rocky Five apologist. I it, am it's too. Like a nice little contrarian take because I know people hate it so much. To be hundred percent honest, I grew up hating Rocky Five. I, I haven't always everyone liked did. It. I got converted in the last podcast. I agree. Yeah. I, fight. I think it's worth fighting for. Some things in life are yeah. worth fighting for. It, it, <laughs> it's, a, it's an imperfect film. Apps are freaking lulely. Oh, yeah. Around the films. Yeah. But it's not a bad film. It's just compared when you're comparing to stuff like the first Rocky film. And but yeah, I know it, it's not in that level at all. I'll say it again. It's grown to me more over the years yeah. than Rocky Balboa, which will be another discussion. Mm-hmm. I've, got, I've got more bones to pick with Rocky Balboa. Okay. What do we got? For uh, well, he has one more, he, one more point. Yeah. Michael says also great picking up on the parallels between the boxing commission scenes in Rocky four and Rocky Balboa. That was my thought when I saw the director's cut of Rocky four. Great work as always. Keep it up. Michael. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Thank Michael. Michael. Thanks, Always Michael. well thought out. Always well thought out uh, emails. He has the Screen Nerds podcast. Check out his podcast. Very well thought out. And I always say people who email us are usually smarter than us. And they do a better job than we do. But okay. Who is the other uh, email from? Gino. Hi, one more round team. I'm Gino from the Electric Views YouTube channel. And I just want to say that I've been enjoying your show. Katie is lovely and adds that essential female touch. Kyle is intelligent and is an intelligent individual and sounds very well read. Are you well read, Kyle? Funny you mentioned that. This year, my New Year's resolution is like, I got to start reading books again because for a few years, so should I had kids, I just, I basically was in school and I had kids at the same time. So I was like reading all the time and doing kids stuff. 
And then once I had could stop reading again, <laughs> I stopped reading for a few years. Now I'm like, I got to start reading books again or, or else. So I'm trying to get well read again. You're intelligent. And you have a plethora of knowledge and stuff that you draw from different sources. It doesn't mean actual physical reading. Oh, okay. It, it could See, be like audio books and YouTube knowledge videos, things like that. Yeah. Okay. That I, I guess so. I never like to toot my own horn, but I'll take that compliment. I'll take it. But even though I'm not well read and gave you that uh, definition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so kyle sounds very well read so his contribution is also appreciated ryan well you're okay too winky uh, face tongue out emoji <laughs> i know i'm ryan, always the ryan. pudgy bag i don't know why i'm always the pudgy bag with people that's okay i'll take it Ry ryan's the heart of the show mm -hmm. you can't you can't have the show without ryan you wouldn't exist discussion no. topic for your next podcast if the Rocky IV director's cut was released in 1985, how well do you think it would have performed at the box office and with critics? Would it have been better than the theatrical release? Thanks, Gino. The director's cut, right now it's released. So let's just pretend minus the 80s fashion or whatever it might be. Oh, let's just pretend it was based in the 80s. Fine, it's released now. How would it be viewed by critics? I don't really care about what critics think. I'm more like, how would the audience react? And so maybe that's sure. a different question. I don't know. And the reason I don't know is I was one when Rocky four came out, I don't know, like Ryan, you would know a lot better than me, how people really thought and how people perceive things. Like I have an idea of what audiences liked in the eighties. It was a huge success. So it was a huge, it, yeah. the fact that Rocky five took so long to green light is odd because usually the sequel is based on the, the success of the predecessor of a film. So Rocky four was a box office smash and success without even looking at the rotten tomato score. I bet you it's 40%. My perception of what eighties audiences liked I think stuff like the robot and things like that would oh, have been well liked back then. Yeah, and I, I think the kind of more serious, darker version of Rocky might not have done as well with audiences, but maybe it would do better with critics. I don't know. I think if the question is today, though, is that the question, Katie? Like, okay. If the director's cut was released in 85, oh, yeah. okay, so it was back. It would okay. have performed the same in terms of box office, but critics would like it way more. Critics hate Stallone. The director's cut in 85, same outcome with audiences, but that critics would have been more. I think it probably would sit at a 55%. Yeah. I don't think it would be 75% with critics. I think it'd be a 55, maybe barely fresh at 60% with critics and audiences still would have liked it because they wouldn't know what they didn't know. They wouldn't mm -hmm, know yeah. there was no robot. They wouldn't right. know there was uh, that stuff. So I think they would have thought, oh, wow, this is kind of a little bit dramatic. You know, Rocky three with the wrestling match was a little bit silly. So they probably would have said, oh, Rocky four kind of goes back to a little bit to the drama. They corrected their course after the Rocky three fiasco go of a little bit of the silliness of the characters of Mr. T and things. So we have from the Van Damme podcast, part of our podcasting network show, the Van Damme show. I'm not sure who's commenting, which of the two hosts they're saying that, yes, the director's cut would not have done any better in the eighties. If you're a fan of our show and you're, if you think I'm okay, check out the last of the action heroes podcast network and check out my appearance my guest appearance on the uh, Van Damme podcast that just dropped yesterday at the time it's recording. So it's fairly new. Go look at the feed. You know, we discussed the missing in action film. I will leave it at that. There's a spoiler at the end where I don't want to spoil it. The design of the podcast was to review missing in action. I'll leave it at that. And it's a, it's a fun episode. We go through pulp culture and things like that. It's a lot of fun. Okay. The hosts are Gru and Evan. So check them out. They're great guys. Great part of the network. And despite their belief, they're well loved. We love them. Okay. Is that it for the email? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go, go folks. Uh, nothing else to really talk about regarding anything else any news or anything like that top of my head i can't think oh there was actually speaking of the van damme they covered jean-claude van damme films by the way that's what they do they brought up some news that sly is coming out with a memoir this has been announced have you heard about this just on the show that you did with oh on the oh, you already listened oh. to it did of course i it? did i always oh. listen okay uh yeah it was fun it was a fun discussion yeah i was surprised by that so apparently it's called the steps and he's going to use like anecdotes about his life and how he got to the top of both you know hollywood and his families and things like that and use rockyisms and share some of his biography and my my response to this is i'll take it and i'm going to read it but i'll be surprised if anything really revealing is given in the book what do you think i concur I want it very badly, more like real stuff. Like I enjoyed the documentary, but n there was nothing really new. Nope, nothing new. It was an enjoyable watch, but I wasn't like, mm -hmm. oh, really? Other than made the dad be more of a dick than I thought he was. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. 
here's the other problem with Sly. And again, I love Sly. And I said this on the show with the Van Damme guys is I love him, but he's an entertainer. He's a storyteller. And I don't know how much of his life we know is actually what happened. And yeah. it's not like it's not criminal activity. I'm not ch- chucking shade at Sly to a certain degree. If he wants to tell fish tales, that's his whole career. That's fine. That's his life. His livelihood is are these fish tales. But I don't think we're getting the whole or, and or correct story from Mr. Stallone. And I don't think the book's going to do him any favors regarding that. I don't think fans are going to walk away from his book thinking, I had no idea. Everything, his whole life, from his birth to now, it's always been like some crazy thing. And this, the, my slur and the Rocky script and all this stuff. And I, and I was living in a darkened apartment. And I wrote this in three days and da-da-da, sold my dog. And, and there seems to be five different versions of every story over the years. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, I very much a- want. Amen, to, brother. Amen. Yes. Because I'm a big dog person, I want to know more about Buckus. Like, what? Not necessarily just the selling of him. Tell us more about Buckus. When? What was your life like with him? And when know. did he pass? I want to hear about how he met uh, Sasha. I want to hear about that. Talk. You must have loved each other at some point. Talk up. Talk about the. It's okay mm-hmm. to say you know it didn't work out. Like I would have no problem a buyer from my life talking about my ex-wife. Like the, yeah, we had some it's great times life. together. Yeah. So yeah, of course we married each other out of love and we loved each other. It was great. It it ended, but that's part of life, and I'd be okay talking mm-hmm. about that. It's not a mystery. It's weird that celebrities have this weird ego where they can't just talk about the, the successes and the failures. Ryan is embracing the Buddhist concept of impermanence. Mm. What's that mean? Mm. What does that mean? <laughs> You're embracing the Buddhist concept of impermanence. Nothing no, explain this. Is- <laughs> Uh, that's like one of the uh, four noble truths of Buddhism is nothing is permanent. Everything changes. Absolutely agree with that. And yes. just appreciating things as they were, but then also accepting the fact that things won't always be the same and that nothing, both good and bad. Mm-hmm. So if you're in a bad situation, you can recognize, hey, this will not be forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also when, when you're, yes, this too shall pass. And then when you're in a good situation, also recognize that this will not last yes. forever and that, the accepting there's ups and downs with you and your experience made me think of that because you're describing both the up and down of your marriage and accepting both of those things. Anyway, sorry, I don't want to rant about Buddhism. And this is probably no, I love it. <laughs> no, I love it. It's in line with a lifestyle that I'm trying to lead better and better. I'm getting better at it with the every passing day is stoicism. It's the same yeah. idea. It just, you can't change what you can't change. You can only change who, how you deal with those situations, like things outside of yourself are neither good nor bad. It's just is it's just yes. life is yeah. life is a life is around you. You're part of it. You're part of this swirling bowl of water that goes down the drain. We're all part of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, eventually we're all gonna die well that's close we're eventually we're all gonna die the reality is from sly down to us we're all gonna pass from this mortal coil just accept things as they are and and uh, have integrity have your own personal truths and uh, be a good person value life around you and life will be okay buddha stoicism i think they're all good philosophy hey i do have a quick question though Please. about the sly in that realm okay this just gets to me but the rottweiler i need to know what the hell happened to the Rottweiler? Where is he? Buckus? No, the Rottweiler that he got when he separated from Jennifer. Oh, he probably must have given it for adoption. Tell me about it. And he got a tattoo. Is it now Jennifer hear. again? Yeah. Is it, or so, is it still the dog? For, if anyone doesn't know, so Sly and Jennifer, they were separated. They were on a mini divorce path. They were getting divorced. They, they said, we're going to get divorced. So they were separated. During that separation, Sly got a dog and got that dog's face tattooed over Jennifer's face on his arm. <laughs> I knew I knew that story, but for some reason that just hit me. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Now they're back together, and I'm happy for them. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just ink. You know, it doesn't do whatever. He made yeah. a mistake, or it's just ink. But now she's gonna see that dog yeah, face right. on him. That's what yes. I mean. <laughs> like, did he? Because I would imagine that he had to have gotten it changed when they got back together. Because if I'm Jennifer, I'm like, oh, you got this because you were pissed at me, and now we're back together and I have to look at it every day? No thanks. I feel like that's a one-way street. You could go from human to dog, but not dog back to human. If you <laughs> or just get it removed altogether. I don't know. I don't know. Good, great question. And we'll never see the tattoos under his sleeves, I believe. So we'll never see what's under there ever again as a public. Uh, he'll never go shirtless again for the public unless some pop Rossi gets him. Jennifer runs that marriage through and through. So whatever Sly did or didn't do, whatever he had to do to get Jennifer back, it was all him. Jennifer left him. I guarantee it. So the fact that she accepted him back into her life tells me she is not in control is the right word, but she doesn't need Sly. 
we've seen that regarding her parenting with the daughters. She's very self-sufficient. She has lots of money. She doesn't need Sly in that sense. So Sly needs her. Um, why he did that tattoo change, I don't know, out of spite, out of anger. Emotions, man. Yeah, I know they're, really they're tricky. Hurting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't blame them. It is what it is. But they're together and they're happy and I want them to be happy. But these are all great questions. And the answer to your question, Katie, will have zero answers on this. But that would be a fantastic read. Imagine if we got that in the book. Like, oh, yeah, you know, you probably got hurt. Yeah, my wife and I, you know, went through separation. I got that stupid tattoo. Talk about it. We don't get a chuckle. He will never share any kind of information that makes him less than godlike human that he thinks he is. I'm just going to say it. I don't actually like Sly that much. <laughs> <laughs> You've mentioned before. You've mentioned before. A, hard, a hot take on the Probably not a lot of listeners are going to like this. I like Rocky. I like the Rocky character. I like aspects of Sly. I really admire him for writing these films. Sure. I admire him. Oh, for I'm, not, his, I'm not married his to his him. fitness accomplishments and all, a lot of his accomplishments. There's many. In, admirable things about sly so it's not an all or nothing but whenever i hear stuff from sly or the idea that there's like a memoir coming on i'm just like eh, <laughs> whatever i'm still interested i, I hear yeah i'll saying. take it all in yeah i, I hear you saying said. i i yeah that's what she said uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I do I do like Sly. I actually do like him. And I know what you're saying. I'm a fan of him too. Like he's my film hero. I, I'm a different generation than even Kyle. It doesn't take very many years, but I was raised on his movies. He's my John Wayne, you know, he's my Paul Newman. But I recognize that he's human, and that's part of why I like him. Like he's human, he's made mistakes. But that's kind of what I want to read about. I want to read his own version of like what happened to the first marriage? I want to hear about the crazy marriage to Bridget Nielsen. I want to hear about that. Maybe he will talk about that because if, if it's crap talking her, he might bring it up. But I want to hear about Sasha. I want to know who she is. Where did she come from? How did they meet? I actually don't know how they met. Mm -hmm. uh, they were married for a little while. They were married when he wrote Rocky. Mm -hmm. I agree with uh, the Van Damme. Who's speaking, by the way? I don't know who's speaking between uh, if it's uh, Gru or Evan. It's probably Gru. He feels that Sly is better than most of Hollywood ilk. And I agree that he is. In many ways, he is. He's a family man. He's self-sufficient. He's written his own success, you know, written his own stories. The Ramble character, he basically made his own. Rocky character, he created. The Expendables movies, he created. Don't don't kiss yourself. You think Sly is the only one in Hollywood who's got an ego? Bless your tender heart. Bless your tender heart. <laughs> that being said, um, you don't hear a lot of people crap talking Sly in the business. I think he's probably decent to work for. I think he's a hard worker on the sets mm -hmm. of films. And things. So within his profession... That's what I like about him. He's a, he's good at his job. He's provided me hours of and hours and hours of entertainment over the years. So is he a perfect human? Well, no, of course not. But that's why I want to read about it. I want to read about his imperfections yeah. and him and yeah, him overcoming fair. those. Yeah. It over you know, I had a bad marriage with Sat or with Bridget Nielsen. It was chaos. She's crazy. But you know, we married each other, we were both hot and we got it on, but we were crazy. I want to hear about those stories. Maybe we'll get them. But in a book called The Steps or whatever, I don't think we're going to hear those kind of stories. Yeah. Maybe she sucks in bed, though. Like, just because you're hot doesn't mean you're, you know what I mean? <laughs> she doesn't have to but do anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. She can just lay there. <laughs> okay. The I cat, suspect you're... it's the other way around, honestly. That slides well, bad? Well, he's not a very good kisser on screen, at least. Sure. And oh, I sure. hate that because I love him so much. Like, I would love to be Adrian, but. Sure. Yeah. All right. Good discussion. That's what I love about our emails. That's what I love about our email section on the show. So it lists some great conversation points before we get into the films. But now we're going to get into the films, I believe. So we're going to start with the original cut. This is just after the funeral scene. The belt is about to be buried. So he's burying the belt with uh, Apollo. So, Katie, do you think that's the actual belt? Or I do. is that a. Yeah, I do too. I think we're led to believe within the film, within yeah. the film universe, that it's Rocky's belt that he won, that he's like, this is the belt I'm bearing with my best friend. Yep, 100%. You're the best. You're the best. I love you, man. So now we're going to go to the original cuts press conference, so we'll comment on that. Rocky, is a decision final? Yes. Rocky, Rocky, over here, please. Is this the first time the champion has given up his crown? It's very quickly. It this is the only quick. time... It's the only time the whole film his belt is mentioned. We talked about in the director's cut, we get the whole meeting behind closed doors. But in the original cut, this is the only thing. Is this the first time the champion has given up his crown? I don't think he actually gave it up, if you want to be technical. It was taken from him because they didn't like the decision. For example, Muhammad Ali refusing to be inducted into the armed forces. You could make the argument that he would know that his title would be taken away for him or that, and he did it anyway. So if you want to look at it that way, then no, it's not the first time. 
I don't know if anyone would just willingly give up their, their crown, but then you could say for Rocky Marciano, for example, he never lost a fight. He would have never had the championship taken from him. He just retired. So is that retirement giving up your crown? So I would say that's false statement. If, if you want to look at giving up the crown as losing it and having it taken from you because of a decision you made, then that's happened lots of times. If you want to say giving up your crown as in, I quit boxing, but I'm going to keep boxing, then yes, if that makes sense. Like I can't think of someone who says, okay, I, I'm not the champion anymore, but I'm still going to fight in these weird jurisdictions or whatever. I, I'm not a boxing expert, but I would imagine no. This is different in that sense, that you continue fighting, but mm-hmm. don't have the championship anymore. I have a question for both you two as well as listeners. You know, in the 80s or 90s, whenever you were watching this as a kid, did you understand what was actually happening here? Did you understand no. watching Rocky IV that he gave up his title? Great question. The answer is no, especially as a kid, no. It would have just... That's what I mean. This is the only time it's mentioned in the whole film. It's just a very quick, it's chatter everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm and just not like a newspaper it. article. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Box commission knockouts, Rocky's belt or whatever will not sanction fight. Wait two years is the quotation. So what does that mean? Wait two years. And the quotation part of the newspaper. To fight, to fight Drago, wait two years. To wait two years to fight Drago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think wait till two years to fight Drago because mm-hmm. I don't think they'd have an issue with Rocky fighting some other guy. Right. In fact, they'd okay. probably love that because it takes attention away from Drago killing Apollo. That's what they were talking about in that deleted scene in the director's cut. That whole box commission, that was probably part of Even in that scene, we didn't see them say to wait two years, but that could have been part of the discussion. Like, why don't you wait a couple of years? But they didn't actually didn't give it a timeline in that in that cut. There is one title they can't take from him. The idea of being the lineal champion. Lineal, the only way that could be taken from you is if someone beats you. All right. I, I just want to congratulate... I know this is not very evergreen or whatever they call it. We have Alexander Usyk, just became undisputed heavyweight champion. He beat Tyson Fury. That's the first time we've had an undisputed champion. That means they have the lineal title and all the belts. Oh, wow. Lennox oh, Lewis back in 2001. It's been over 20 years. Oh, Whoa, wow. really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's a pretty big event in boxing. So I know this will be dated and... No, that's fine. That's fine. That's a worthy non-evergreen statement. But, so when people are listening to this podcast 10 years from now, it's a little piece of history. To bring it up, Tyson Fury, he's the guy who, when he got the championship, the lineal and a couple belts, basically slipped into depression and alcoholism. That's right. And had his title stripped, but then he still said he held the lineal title. And, and Rocky mm-hmm. could still claim that because no one beat him. And no one ever took that from him. Sometimes the lineage has to reset. Like Marciano who was a lineal title holder, and no one ever beat him. So the lineage had to reset at Marciano. Oh. All right. Before we get too further, I, I got so excited having Katie back and our great email discussions. And I forgot about our trivia. So let's go through that really quickly here. Ooh. Uh, do you want to do trivia at the end and then do the answers? Well, right we now. can do the answers right after. We can do that. Since we yeah, because it feels weird to interrupt it with trivia. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Executive decision. I'm sorry. Granted. Hey, I'm my bad. This is your show. It's, your show. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We can fine. We'll do the question and answer at the same time. That's easy. Just the people who are want to play along at home or watch this live, they're gonna have to stick around to the very end, I guess. Okay. Hey, that's good. Make them yeah. listen more. Okay, so there we go. Is this the first time the champion has given up a crown? I think Rocky does answer it. It goes, I think it goes, I don't know. <laughs> I could talk to Kyle, I guess. <laughs> I just bite, okay? Uh, I just fight. I don't know about that. See, right there. Oh, I don't know, yeah, about, I don't know that. about that. I don't know about that. So he does answer it, but he's like, I don't know. Frick, man. I got to go pull up my boxy almanac or something. And then they, someone says, doesn't the title mean anything to you anymore? So I think I remember that line, but not mm-hmm. even understanding why they're asking that. Yeah, agreed. I don't mean anything to you anymore. Not until this is over. Coach Grizzly, considering Rocky's known punching power, do you still think this is going to be an easy fight? Yes, of course. It's a method of science. Now, Rocky was known for, you know, that big boxer's punch, but I think he's more known that he's able to take punches. That might have been a better question. He's able to take punishment. His punching power is pretty good, but I don't think that's what it beat Apollo so much as just he kept coming after you. We don't need that kind of man in our life. Like, Rocky was the guy that just kept coming he Mm -hmm. couldn't knock him out yeah yeah drago's chin is untested good point i I, I don't think anyone has ever before this ever hit drago ever had a chance to actually land a hard shot on drago like who knows in his amateur career but i'm guessing he just beat the living shit out of everybody with ease 
So it looks like it's made of steel, though. So I yes, mean, <laughs> <laughs> and we find out he actually can take a lot of pressure mm-hmm. to his credit. Oh, yeah. Devolution, isn't it, gentlemen? Drago is the most perfectly trained athlete ever. This other man has not the size, the endurance, or the genetics to win. It's physically impossible for this little man to win. I love how he ties these. Yes, Sly's not very tall, but Sly wrote this dialogue, so good for him that he keeps referring to his own small stature compared to Drago. You know what this kind of reminds me of more than Soviet stuff? This reminds me more of like pre-war Nazi Germany. Mm, and genetics with, with, bit with the idea because they were really into eugenics and racial superiority of course and there's uh the whole like the summer olympics were in berlin i think in 36 or something around then where um, american athlete jesse owens uh, african-american yeah won the gold medal in uh, track and field i think 100 meters or something like that did but it was like leave or something? Yeah, he wasn't like super happy about it. Uh, some people dispute that, but I, I this kind of like we have the superior genetics, we're the superior people. Like he's talking about Drago, but I think he's kind of when he talks about like, oh, you let us educate your people, like we're more evolved, we're better than you. He's really talking about the Soviet Union in general, but I mm-hmm. think in Fly's mind Sly's borrowing a lot from like past historical narratives. Which is totally fine. I'm not criticizing you for that, but just kind of that's what came in my mind. I love Michael Pataki in this, and I actually think he's right. Rocky would not win. How dare you? I mean, right? Because he's not even a heavyweight. He and Drago would never fight each other. Uh, That just wouldn't happen. I agree with you, Katie, that probably, like, yeah, like someone of Dolph's size and stature against Sly's size size and stature. We know in, in reality, Dolph put him in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Like you moved his heart <laughs> with a body punch. I will mention though, just as a thing, uh, Alexander Usyk, who just won, was forty pounds lighter in six oh. inches, six inches shorter than his oh, opponent. Wow. Oh wow, impressivo! Now Tyson Fury's kind of fat, to be fair, but <laughs> he's he's still a big he's he's a big boy. Okay. Is some precedent for a little guy okay. beating a bigger guy, but know. I still agree with you. I still agree that the idea of Rocky winning this fight is kind of unbelievable. <laughs> Drago is a look at the future. Jeff, there's been no mention of it yet, but how much are you making for this fight? No money. It's not about money. I love Paulie's face there when he mentions there's no money. Paulie should have said, but I need to lose more for the next film. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's irrelevant. In one more film, this is all irrelevant. Not even. This drove me nuts, and it still does. I mean, I get that it's not about the money, but take some this money. Show Give you it away to it's charity. It's all business. It's all yeah. business. No, because who's going to pay the bill? Who would give Rocky actual money? So the, let's say. Oh, the like, Soviet Union could this, give money. Mm-hmm. Which is, I'm sure Drago's being paid. They're probably doing a bit of an F you. Like, you want to come to our country and fight us? Fine, but we're not paying you anything, which oh, is yeah. odd. You, but yeah. you would think they might want to give him something. I mean, they're probably paying for his flight, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm things. guessing the Soviet Union is saying, we'll fly you to wherever you want to go. We'll set up your training camp. We'll provide you food and stuff like that. Take care of all the logistics. But we're not giving you no. a million bucks or whatever. <clears throat> like it, mm-hmm. It's just a showcase within the film universe that the Rocky character is just doing this for the pure... For his friend. uh, I know. He's fighting for his friend. (laughs) Especially because they lost all their money. I'm like, if he would have just made some money on this fight. The Soviet Union used to make money off their athletes competing abroad. The Soviet hockey team used to play NHL teams and get paid for it. The Soviet ruble couldn't be used outside the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was always desperate for foreign currency. So they're not giving away any foreign currency to Rocky. That's for damn sure. Okay, now we're not getting any money. Oh, but of course we'll have the fight, you know, May 3rd or something. No, no, let's do it. Let's do Christmas. What the hell? The Soviet Union, of course, is is officially an atheist country, Mm -hmm. so they wouldn't celebrate Christmas. But even if they did... They use the uh, Gregorian calendar, so their Christmas is January 7th. Mm. But what I love, too, it's the Soviets say, we're not going to pay you, and you will <laughs> fight on your most celebrated holiday. You could die as your child at home, and that would be his lovely Christmas present to watch his dad die in the ring. Yeah, it'd be fantastic. <laughs> Man, oh, God, I never thought of that. You know? never thought of that. Imagine if you're a kid... And on Christmas Day, yeah. you see your dad beaten to death on television. <laughs> it's like what Adrian's, I mean, imagine being Adrian 
also like you know what they say it's suicide <laughs> oh god i never thought of that that's, that's messed up <laughs> All right, so we got some good comments here. Louise says it's on the USA network, I believe. So the TV network would gladly pay. You're right. Good they are point. streaming this. There is ad revenue where someone's buying yeah. the feed. Yeah. So you're right. The fact that Rocky's not getting any money from the feeds is odd because he's the draw for the American audience. So that's a good mm-hmm. point. This, this so, really goes back to his uh, negotiation where he got the yeah. robe and Polly got $3,000. Like Mickey sarcastically said, shrewd. <laughs> Or also when he negotiated the time on the ice for the first date, you know, 10, yeah. 10 bucks, 10 minutes, and he negotiated and ended up still being 10 bucks for 10 minutes. Yeah, okay. I bet you he's paying a lot more for stuff at his restaurant than he should. Mm-hmm. His bag of onions costs $300. <laughs> Of course, Donald agrees. Yes, evil Russia won't pay, but in real life, you'd have to get something from somebody somewhere, especially on the U.S. side. There's no way that there would be some sort of sponsor. So, hey, just wear our robe, wear our shoes, or unless Rock himself is saying, I shall accept no money because this is for a greater purpose than financial yeah. gain. That's what Probably, we're like. That, yeah. that sounds more right. You would think, like, Rocky doesn't have a manager, I guess, right? Like, Tony's the kind, maybe? No, his manager is dead in heaven. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to help you, Rocky, but I gotta, I gotta wait till part five before I visit you. I'm sorry. Uh, Imagine uh, if, if Mickey was around for this. What goes on in that head of yours? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Anything normal? <laughs> the fight date been set yet? December 25th. Why Christmas? Christmas? That's what I was told. Where? in Russia. I see at this point, Paulie's like, no money, Christmas, and in Russia. But I love how Paulie shows up anyways. He still goes to all this. So to his credit, he's there for Rocky. But I'm told I'll get some Soviet Union shot glasses I can take home. And they'll also give me a nice coat I can take home. So that's nice. I well, they, do, <laughs> they do get a marshmallow roasting kit for their lodge there. Yes, and they they get um they get some assistance to chaperone them, which is That's really right. thoughtful of the Soviets. Do that. No Rose Bowl game, no comics. Poor Polly. Yeah. Rocky, what's going on? Why did you we agree to this? We fight in Soviet Union, but we fight nowhere. Why don't you ask Drago's wife why she is afraid? Tell them please. I'm afraid for my husband's life. Aww. We have threats of violence everywhere. Aww. Can you imagine the Twitter feed right now? Oh my god. Can you imagine Paul's dead? The Twitter comments under Drago's personal Twitter file or the wife's it would be legit. I believe her 100 percent Yeah. That she's yeah. getting death threats and stuff. I don't blame her at all for saying that. But they're saying now that they'll never fight in the States, they can only fight in the Soviet Union. So this whole journey to America was a bust for the Russians, too. So if you want to argue, was a Paul's death supposed to happen because now they too can't fight in the US. They kind of ruined yeah. their whole purpose of coming here. You think they'd maybe fight in a neutral country? Like have the fight in like Zurich or somewhere like that? Mm-hmm. Like that to me it would make more sense than doing it in the Soviet right. Union. But it's I think Rocky's desperate to fight Drago more than Drago's desperate to fight Rocky, if that makes sense. Mm. Because of that, the Soviet Union can kind of dictate terms. Plus, True. Rocky can't negotiate for shit, which doesn't help. So it's mm-hmm. like I guess I'm fighting on your home turf on Christmas. It's- the right. reporters, I love how they groan at her. Yeah. Like, Your life is threatened. And they're like, oh, poo poo, you. <laughs> well, just, I remember thinking it was wimp. ridiculous <laughs> yeah. when I was a kid because I'm like, oh, this, he killed someone. He's big. He's, you know, I remember thinking it was really ridiculous. Also, what is actually ridiculous, when is this taking place? Like, what are the sequence of events? Because Adrian is completely unaware that this giant press conference is happening. Think about it. If you want to get down to this is the 80s, nothing's on the internet, there's no social media. A Rocky could have easily just negotiated, even if it was like a month later or two weeks later, he could have put this all together. Thought, why would Drago's team contact Adrian? Hey, just you know, thanks for letting your husband do this. Like, who's contacting Adrian directly? No, saying, but like he's getting dressed up and leave. What, what are you doing today? They don't have a conversation about, hey, what, what's on the yeah. agenda today? Honestly, being married. I know the real fight Rocky and Adrian would have before this whole suicide thing is why didn't you tell me about this first? Yeah. If you can't do that, doing it's one thing, which she doesn't agree, but doing it behind her back, that's going to be the big fight. Mm -hmm. No, I agree that it's silly that Adrian, you're right. I'm defending it a little bit. 
but, but it's you're a movie. right. <laughs> you're right. The fact that Adrian has uh, is wholly unaware is is a kind of a film flub in and of itself. Like Kyle and I are married, and of course, Katie, you've been with. Uh, I think you've you're, you've been with a man before. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, never, <God>. never. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is, is that I know my marriage. I don't know how I could pull this off. My wife knows everything I'm doing all the time. It's, it's ridiculous. Like I, if I put on a shirt and tie, I can only imagine I come down the stairs and wear Where a shirt. Going? Yeah, my wife would be like, okay, <laughs> where <laughs> is somebody died? You got a job interview? What's happening? Yeah, the fact that he's able to pull this off without her, yeah, it, it is pretty amazing. Okay, the reporters are groaning. We are not politics. All I want is for my husband to be safe, to be treated fairly. Look at them laugh. <laughs> They're laughing okay, at Okay, well, her. that's bullshit. We are not in politics. You are absolutely in politics, and especially your your mm-hmm. secret lover there. What's his face, comrade, <laughs> comrade Big Mouth? He's for sure in politics too. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> sorry, Katie's laughing at the chat. So uh, Evan wants to know for the Van Damme podcast. He goes, has Katie ever been with a man before? And I wrote, unlikely. It's unlikely. I don't know if anyone can't handle Katie or she just finds men gross. I'm not too sure which one it is. Um, They're not mutually exclusive, exclusive, you know. That's true. That's true. I mean, have you guys met me? I'm all I do is drool over Drago and Rock. Yeah. Well, that's right. None of us could measure up. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's yep. Yeah. Average man kind of does suck. Let's let's be real. Let's be honest. It's true. Mm -hmm. You call him a killer. He's a professional fighter, not a killer. You have this belief that you are better than us. You have this belief that this country is so very good and we are so very bad. You know, that's a great delivery by her. I have always enjoyed that part by her. I've always enjoyed that line. And in today's day and age, it's, (laughs) yeah, it's tough not to feel that sometimes America thinks this. Um, Yeah. Soviets are no better. The guy right right beside her minute a minute ago was like, "Let me educate you. Like we are so, like, look at our genetics to win. Like you you mm-hmm. let's see how evil." Well, he says this after me. He he, he shit talks a, a minute from now. Both Rocky. sides are guilty. Both yes. sides are guilty. Yes. You have this belief that you are so fair and oh, we are so very country. It's all lies and false propaganda to support this antagonistic and violent. I'll say this right now in case I forget that cut right there where Michael Pataki. So when he does that line delivery there, we'll not sit here to support this antagonistic government. The cut and the director's cut is really poor because oh, we'll get to why it's really poor. It's poorly done. It's even not that great here. It doesn't really make sense because he's basically saying we're not going to support you guys by fighting here or anything or your narrative by being here. So we're going to leave shortly. But then, of course, Paulie has to jump in with his classic line. We don't keep our people behind a wall with machine guns. I, I agree with Paul. In my opinion, the East German government was a puppet state of the mm-hmm. Soviet Union. That wall was built because Khrushchev wanted that wall built. Okay. Once the Soviet Union left, for example, um, the Russia was involved it, with the Berlin Wall. They were involved. Yeah, in the they were involved in all Eastern Europe. It was basically, in my opinion, okay. occupied by Russia, Czechoslovakia, Hungary. They had uprisings. The Russian military or the Soviet military went in and crushed them. I think Polly's right here. As much as people shit on America, and there are like legitimate criticisms of America, the Soviet Union is like oh, of course, so of course, much worse. Of course. America has a lot of right things about it, and a lot of good things about it. I would pick a USA over Soviet Union. Any day. Well, I would live here and so there, of course. That's why people come here. And that's why, yeah, let's not get started. But people keep migrating here for a reason. They're not migrating to other countries. Who are you? Who am I? I'm the unsilent majority, big mouth. Good. That's good. Insult us. This more typical rude behavior toward visiting foreigners. But perhaps uh, yeah. this simple defeat of this little so called champion will be a perfect example of how. Weak your society has become. Oh my God. I didn't want to stop it. I love that delivery uh, by Michael. It's great, perfect. Everything's great about it, and how weak and pathetic your society has become. There was something that Paulie said that I never understood as a kid, but I understand okay. now. Is when he says we're the unsilent majority. Same. Richard Nixon always used to talk about during like the Vietnam War, for example, like the great silent majority of people who are like okay with the war and they're okay with his policies. And then mm. in reality, all these protests that were happening were just very vocal groups of a minority, but there was a great silent majority 
that were okay with this. And Paulie's saying that he's the unsilent majority, that everyone, what he's thinking is also what everyone else is really thinking. Do you guys notice in this, I can't recall how it is in the director's cut, but Drago, Yvonne is like secondary. Like he's not even really part of that press conference. No, 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 no one gives a shit, but he's a prop. Mm-hmm. He's a tool. Which you're going to get to right now. So that's good. So we're going to see some of the changes with the director's cut of Drago's a little bit more involved, Katie. Rocky, is the decision final? Yes. Rocky, Rocky, over here, please. Is this the first time the champion has given up his crown? I don't know about that. Doesn't the title mean anything to you anymore? Not until this is over. You hear the musical cues in the background too? We didn't get that for the original cut. It's weird. We're getting it's the uh, Vince Dicola mm-hmm. sound. You've agreed to fight, but don't you think you're moving a little too quickly? No, is that question asked? I don't nope. think so. Nope. No, no, that's, that's I don't recognize that. Okay, so don't you think you're moving a little bit too quickly? Drago's ready now. Drago, what does this fight mean to you? Drago's ready now means we have to do this before the steroids wear off. <laughs> 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 yeah, they've got plenty true. of those they've got plenty that line there drago's right now we don't know yeah. who on his team even said that really i, I think that's man. his trainer guy oh, okay that's beside and him and then the reporters are asking follow-up questions which is nice drago what does this fight mean to you so fighting rocky what does this mean to you good question do you have any feelings on it no so this is new for kyle to see but look how he answers do you have any feelings on it? And you can see that he wants to... This is great acting by Dolph, and I've mm-hmm. said it a hundred times. His acting in this film is fantastic as the Drago character. Dolph also did a really good job of communicating through body language, given that he didn't have too many lines. Yep. I know mm-hmm. he has more lines on the director's cut, but it's interesting Like when I'm looking at his face here. He almost kind of looks sheepish. He reminds me of a child who is just scorned. Like he was just told off about something and they're kind of their heads down like that. And they're kind of unsure of themselves. And obviously he has a lot to be sure about because he's so good. He's kind of, I think, beaten down. And, well, he, and Yeah, he got a talking yeah. to before this press conference. Like, yeah. this is what you do. This is what you don't do. He is trained or not trained. Uh, what do you call it? He's told what he can and can't say at these press conferences. So he's asked, do you have any feelings on it? He answers no, but his body language signifies that's a lie. Mm-hmm. He does have feelings on it, and he probably wishes he could share them, but he says no, but it looks to his trainers to the left or to the left of himself. Looks this at is a trainers. great screenshot, Ryan, right here. For me, I, anyway. I, 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 I quite I, like it. No, I got I got this one already, more or less. I okay. This. Two very handsome men together here, yep. Okay, so he says no. Drago has told me that this will be an easy fight. Can Drago speak for himself? Yes. That's good. So he goes, yes. And he kind of looks pissed off here. So he went from like saying no, looking at his trainers, but now he's looking at the lady. Yes, I can speak for myself, but I'm not allowed to. He's feeling frustrated there. And it shows that he does actually have English comprehension, these last two lines. Good point. Yep. Very you good know, point. Yeah, these these reporters are speaking very quickly. And it's like for anyone trying to learn a new language, reading something and hearing someone speaking is totally different. It's really hard to understand people when they're talking quickly. Yeah, good point about him understanding language, right? Yeah, good point. Yes, well, it's a matter of science. Ooh, evolution. See, that was Great. so good. Yeah, I know, because he was told that yes, I can speak for myself, and then it segues into that part of Michael saying, "Oh yeah, it's a matter of science and evolution." And the cuts to Drago's face, like, "Cheese, man!" Like they just don't let me talk. I'm just nothing but a puppet, a propaganda piece for them. I've got some feelings on this matter, but yeah, they just step right over him. Isn't it, gentlemen? Drago is 13 years younger. Okay, so he's 13 years younger. That's new information. So that would mean we said his age in the film is that he's 20. Sorry, that Drago's 24, I think, in real life. So maybe he's 26 in the film. Yeah. yeah. Rocky's 39. Okay, so there you Mm -hmm. go. Pretty close. Pretty close to the actor's ages, too. So pretty close. Like they talk about age stuff right now, the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight, Mm. which is going to be billed as a professional fight now, not an exhibition, where 58 versus 27. So even a bigger difference. Huge. Oh, yeah. This director's cut, this is really good. Despite the fact that they took out Brigitte stuff, this press conference, similar to the one with Apollo, too, where Drago gets more to do, Mm -hmm. and they point out how unrealistic it is for Rocky to win in Mm -hmm. in this way. Again, (laughs) I love you, Sly, but his hatred for his ex-wife wrecks this scene because he should have done this pieces of stuff 
meaning like the Drago insertions, awesome. We get more Drago being humanized and crapped on a little bit. We see we empathize with the, even though this guy killed Apollo in the ring accidentally. I believe it was accidental. I don't think it was murder, but he pulverized Apollo to death in the ring. We still feel for him as a piece of propaganda. Then I wish he kept in Burgess Nielsen's acting as well. It wouldn't have been that much. But now we're still missing things from this scene. So both scenes are missing something. It's frustrating. Yeah. Okay. And the most perfectly trained fighter ever. This other man is not this size or the endurance, or the genetics to win. It's physically impossible for this little man to win. I'm curious if you guys think Drago's looking over at him. There's a lot of them looking at each other. I love that. Right. Yeah. But then they they show Rocky sort of, it's almost like he believes it too. He's like, yeah, I probably can't win. I, that's sort of what I got from his. Yeah, well, I get yeah. from Rocky in general. Uh, he knows he's going into the meat grinder. Mm-hmm. He recognizes he's going to battle for sure. He's not Apollo cocky. Despite that, for himself, he's doing this regardless of the outcome, which is what angers Adrian, quite frankly. He's not yeah. thinking logically. You're right. And Drago's trainer is actually being logical. Like It's insane to think that little man has a chance of beating Drago. Look what he did to a former champion very easily. What, Rocky's that much better? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and... If I'm a sports analyst, if I want to like give a critique of what he said, I dispute the claim that Drago's the most perfectly trained athlete ever. That hasn't been demonstrated. Another little scientific experiment with him. <laughs> yeah, they can measure his punching power yeah. and give him roids, I guess, but which we don't. Mm-hmm. Is the analyst? I wouldn't know that. Like we know that as the viewer of the film, we don't know much about his fighting ability other than he beat Apollo pretty easily, so obviously he can fight. Uh, we know he can punch really hard. We don't know, like I said, if he has a good chin. If Rocky connects with him, we don't know how he'll be able to take that. We don't know what his endurance is like, because he's probably never had a fight go over one or two rounds. Just because one fighter could beat another... Like, for example, um, George Foreman beat Ken Norton silly in, like, two rounds. Beat Joe Frazier silly within a couple rounds. Easily knocked him out. Frazier and Norton have beaten Muhammad Ali, and even in the fights that didn't beat him, it was like a 15-round mega battle. Hmm. Right, so you think, okay, well, Foreman could beat those guys who easily beat Ali. Then Foreman must be able to easily beat Ali too. No, mm-hmm. good point. No. Also, like Mike Tyson, for example, is small compared to other heavyweights. Maybe not the difference between Sly and Drago, but his technique is specifically tailored for him to beat bigger people. He actually does better against bigger people than people his own size. I generally agree that Drago would probably win, but his analysis isn't isn't really that good. Drago. Is a look at the future. Not the fight date been set yet. December 25th. Why Christmas? That's what I was told. Where? It's in Russia. Are you nuts? Why did you agree to this? We found- no mention of the money. Am I wrong about that? There was no mention of no money on this uh, cut. Is it still to come? Perhaps? No, it was before. No. It was the first yeah. thing that you mentioned. Okay. The- yeah, so interesting he took that out. I wonder what his thoughts were. Why would he take out the money talk? I wonder. Maybe because he knows everything we just brought up. Like the fact there would be sponsors. It would have to be something. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it shows that uh, Rocky's not in it for any other reason. But I think that's that's already clear. It's unnecessary. Like you can have it there. It's fine. But I always find the thought process interesting. Like he made the decision. I am not going to put it in there. I just wonder why. Yeah. I, mean, I, I like to think it's probably because he's like, uh, it's kind of silly. People are making money off me that there's money. is going to be somewhere, somehow, somewhere. I, like he knows box better now than he even did back then. Probably how it all works within the industry. So it's like, ah, too much complication about that. Let's just take that out. In Soviet Union, and we fight no one. So, of course, all that part was taken out. He's saying we're going to fight in Russia because we're going to fight nowhere. There's no mention there of death threats. Mm-hmm. My husband be- and I are being attacked by your public. All taken out. Bertrand Nielsen doesn't say a word this whole conference. Unfortunate because that was a great delivery and a great scene in the moment because it showcases the reality that we all agree that, yes, if this was done today or even back then, that of course there would be death threats against these people. This country could never judge a fight fair. There you go. There's a new line. That's probably true, too. But nor could they either. Yeah. yeah. That's why neutral location. You yeah. Have, like, do it in Switzerland or Sweden mm-hmm. or wherever. You have Lou Filippo as a referee. So there's yeah, no- yeah. Man, you have Lou Filippo in there. Drago could do whatever he wants to Rocky. Hey, you know, it's funny. He's saying, like, we're going to fight in Russia, but can we bring Lou with us, please? <laughs> We'd like to have him referee that fight. Oh, fun fact. I think, I don't know if I mentioned this before. The ref for Rocky 3 in the first clubber fight is the Russian ref 
I like think the actor is the same? I think, I think yeah, the actor is the same. Okay. That's hilarious. They did grab, yeah, they grabbed the American ref. Uh, Donald would like to say that you have this belief that your director cut is so much better. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good one, Donald. I missed that. That's funny. I like that. Uh, what makes you say he's not being treated fairly? It is more lies in false propaganda to support this antagonistic See? and violent government. See, talk about that it's a weird cut. What? It is yeah, a weird that's cut. Kind of a non sequitur. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Non sequitur. The segue is terrible. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And this is now where Pauly comes in with his statement. But yeah, Sly kept it in there, and he tried to he tried to wiggle it in there or squeeze it in there. He, but I think he wanted Pauly to have his part, so they had to throw it in there. But the question and the answer there were pieced together. It doesn't make sense. It needed Brigitte's. It needed Brigitte's. That's right, yeah. because Brigitte was taken out. Yeah, it mm-hmm. doesn't make sense. Violent. Hey, we don't keep our people behind a wall with machine guns. Who are you? Who am I? I'm the unsilent majority, big mouth. Good. That's good. Insult us. This more typical rude behavior toward visiting foreigners. But perhaps this simple defeat of this little so-called champion will be a perfect example of how pathetic we... That's a new scene there. Yeah. Yeah, that was far- awesome. For our audio listeners, when he's going on that little tirade there, Polly is about to get up and like knock his block off or get you know physical. And Rocky puts his hand on his chest and he'll sit down, Polly. Let him get it out. Don't make more of a scene. That's a great little dramatic moment there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Love Polly it. loves Rocky. You know, like Polly shit talks constantly. Yeah. Polly shit talks constantly, but at the end of the day, man, he's not going to put up with people shitting on Rocky. You see, uh. Polly doing this like in the Rocky Two press conference too. I love Polly is able. Polly has a way of pushing people's buttons, which which I really. Well, like. he, your point is really good too because, like in five, he kind of steps up and gets punched. Like, yeah, he comes to Rocky's defense always, and he has a history. Remember when those bums would give Rocky trouble for talking jive? That's Who whacked true. those bums out? Polly. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Your society has become. We go. We go. This is more or less the same exit. There's so many looks. I think there's way more looks between Rocky and Apollo yeah. for Rocky and Drago in this. Yeah, this part. is a, this is a better shot here. So they got the table shot of the men leaving, getting up to go. Drago's team leaves first. In the original cut story, we had behind the backs of the reporters rushing the table scene. So this is a better scene. We get to see the actual characters here, the main characters leaving the table, then the the backs of the uh, reporters. Now, it's up to you guys. The director's cut and the original cut regarding Adrian and the stairs is word for word similar other than the things that were taken out. Now, we can watch the original and go to the director's. Or we just do the director's cut if you guys know the original well enough. Yeah, I think let's just do director's cut. Like, okay. I think it's tough going back and forth too much. I like going back and forth. It's just I don't want to rush it is all I'm saying. But we could okay. save it for the next episode. We do both. Not or we you. could just. I'm fine with whatever you guys want to know. Actually, I you know was what? just like, looking at the car. And I oh, never noticed nice it was T-tops before. Oh. But oh, I yeah, hate maroon cars. Hate. Oh, you do? Hate. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, do you think of, what do you think of the band Maroon 5? <laughs> uh, they're fine. I don't. I have no opinion one way or the other. Find it okay. odd how reporters are like on her property. Not like outside allowed? the gate. No, they're like trespassing. Like, <laughs> That's what I thought. you think they'd have? You think Rocky's place would have security or like a locked gate or something? Oh, yeah, it's a gated community for sure. But yeah, you think their property has a wall around it with a gate <laughs> or something? Reporters are just trespassing. Like it's bizarre. We'll save it. So let's. You know what? I don't want to rush it. If you guys are in any rush, I don't. I don't need to be. They don't need to be. Yeah, we have trivia still to do. So we don't need to do like ninety minute episodes plus just because I don't want to rush it. So far, it's worked out really well. I think our listeners do appreciate it. So we'll do the original cut and the uh, the director's cut is very. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to talk about, it, but I don't want to rush it. What it takes out is actually very a lot to talk about regarding what it takes out and why. So I like to hear like your guys' thoughts of why Sly, why Sly. Why did you do that? Why did you take that out? It doesn't make sense. And I don't want to rush that conversation. So let's get to the trivia question. So I have a homework assignment as well, by the way, for next week's trivia, our next recording Uh trivia. Okay. Because there's one question here that's too big to do. And it's also going to involve the honor system. I trust you guys. You know, I've been honest with you because that's why I'm losing. (laughs) I have the answers in front of me, yet I still lose. The homework assignment is we're going to ask the question now, but you're going to come with your answers next episode. Whoever gets the most wins. We'll do it like that. 
And if there's a tie, then the people that tie, or if all three of us tie, we all get the point. So it's whoever has the most wins. So if there's a tie, then it'll go down to like exact quotes, meaning who got the most exact quotes. The question is, name all of Dragle's 10 lines in the film. So obviously the original cut. Ooh. Yeah. Well, it's going to be honor system. So I have his answers. I haven't even looked at them. I swear to you, I haven't looked at the answers. For example, we all know if he dies, he dies. That's for example. So let's so let's just pretend Kyle says, I don't care that he dies or something. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying yeah. to think of a way to screw that one up. So let's say if it was a tie, it's whoever got the quote exactly right over the other one. Okay. That's for next I, time you're saying or right yeah, now? next time. Okay. That's for next week. So that's what I mean. Honor system. Work on it throughout the week. You can work on it all week. You just can't watch the movie again. Okay. Now look online. No cheating. This is just from what's in your head onto the paper. Obviously, honor system. Yeah. I'll be I, I, trust yeah, I trust you guys. Yeah, I trust you guys. I don't okay. trust any of the audience members, though. No offense, no. guys. <laughs> I don't trust any of the audience. <laughs> okay. So now, to, with today's questions and answers, we'll just we'll give it like a three second pause. We'll just take turns answering. So, who says, "Get that light off him" when Apollo was knocked out by Drago? Rocky. Okay. That's what I put. Yeah. Okay. How much does Drago weigh when he is fighting Apollo? The I know time? it within one pound. At the first press conference, who wait? Says, are we going to say what our? No, we'll do the last are? four. We'll do the last four together. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, at the first press conference, who says? I think the first thing you need is a ladder. Okay. Well, there you go. And then, who sings "Living in America"? And last, <laughs> and last question: Who says we go? <laughs> <laughs> but that might be tough. Do we have to know the character's name? I always forget his name. They just said it. I just call him by his Drago's, name. Paul, I see his Drago's trainer, Big Mouth. Yeah, okay. it's Michael Pataki. Michael, Michael Pataki is the actor's name. I got that. Right. It's Thank Rimsky, you. Coach Rimsky. Okay. Well, if it says the name, will you give me the point? If it says Drago's coach, Rim. I think his name is I, Rimsky. I'm going by his nickname. I hope you, I'd like to get the answer right. Still, yeah. Like I don't we know, know who it is. is. We like, know. That's yeah. what I mean. I know who it is on the screen. I just don't know what he's called in the film. Always. Well, do I get a bonus point, point if it is? No. <laughs> yeah, you don't need any bonus points. It's totally okay. rigged. Believe Believe me. <laughs> that was pretty good. Okay, so yeah, Rocky, of course, said get the light off him. Yep. That was, Rocky that was, said that? Yeah, get that light oh, off good. him. Nepal, yep. I was reaching for that one. I was not sure. Well, what really are your answers for the weight? Because I was way off. I was way off. Either 260 or 261. I thought it was How? 260 or 265. I did 265 and then I changed it to 260. And I'm, I'm okay. like, it's I'm not, okay. it is not okay. 260. Slow down. So, what don't just Kyle, what's your final answer? 260 is my final answer. Well, Katie, what's your final answer? Gotta give me one number. I can't say 260 or 261. No, nope. I got it wrong, wrong. So, I gotta. Do oh, something. if I'm one pound off. Oh, shit. Let's see. Cause I think the deal is one of them had a one. Apollo is either 220 or 221. But I said 220. That was my answer, but that's Apollo's weight. So that's I Apollo. Yeah. I'm going to say 261. Okay. Kyle, what's your final answer? 260. 261. <laughs> ah! Man alive, Katie. <laughs> God, you're annoying. You're that kid. I would <laughs> throw paper balls at her head at the school class. Like, oh, you're such a nerd. Frustrating. Okay. We all got the rest of it. So we know that get a ladder was rocky. James Brown saying living in America. And then who says we go? His answer was, he said Drago's trainer. That's funny. Drago's I mean, trainer. technically he's not his trainer. Yeah. I think like a 10 year old boy, like all these years, I just referred to him as a trainer. All right. So good job. everybody. So Katie, you got five. I got four. I just got, I got four as well. I lost by one pound and one pound only. <laughs> That's very hard of a man in my intelligence to handle. Ah, <laughs> good one. Very good. Hey, I'm actually kind of surprised I got a number. Like I'm surprised I got a number. I got, I said 220. My brain so it went to 220. So my brain actually was like was scouring. My, yeah. yeah, it was Apollo's weight. So my brain's like, hey, Ryan, you've heard these weights before 220. I was like, that sounds kind of light for Drago. For Drago, it was, yeah. It was Apollo's weight. Okay. Well, that was a lot of fun, guys. I'm looking forward to next episode where we cover, yes, the stairway scene and Robert Tepper's No Easy Way Out song sequence. We'll discuss that with the volume down, of course, and we'll just pick the director's cut when we watch the flashback sequences because there's only one change that's done, but we can talk about what we look at regarding the flashback sequences. That's it. With that, though, this episode is over. I didn't hear no bell.